Beautiful, beautiful. Now, um, you know, with, with, with our show, you know, I like to tell some of our younger viewers about uh, the African diaspora. And, and when I bring people of color on the show, it's typically people of color from all different parts of the world, you know. Um, now, you're in the UK. Uh, where are you people originally, uh, originally from? Are they from the islands or? Well, my, I'm, my parents are from Jamaica. So okay. both of my parents are Jamaican. And so my heritage, obviously, my ethnic background is Jamaican. And my grandparents were Jamaican. And then actually some of my grandparents were Cuban. They were born in um, parts of South America as well. So it's kind of a mix up. But I'll say I'm the first generation um, in terms of Caribbean Jamaican in, in the UK. So all, both of my parents were born not in the UK and then they came over. And so I'm like, I was born in the UK. So, um, yeah, I'll, but, you know, there's a mixture, obviously, in the UK. There's loads of different cultures, especially in London. I think London is like one of the, you know, the uh, cities of the world where you, you can get pretty much any kind of culture, any kind of person there. So um, it's a mixture. Beautiful. Um now you're a multi-instrumentalist and you know typically when you meet artists quote unquote you know they might do a couple of instruments you know but uh, i believe you do drums keyboard bass guitar electric guitar acoustic guitar did i miss anything yeah no that's it <laughs> bass so that's it like i play i play four instruments i mean i don't yeah i mean when people think it's like Four instruments. It's quite a lot, but I can't play the violin, for example. You know, so there's quite a few instruments that I cannot play. Um, when I was growing up, I used to. I started learning how to play the saxophone, but I mean, for me to play it now, I don't think I could pick it up and play it now properly. Um, so yeah, mine is the, my first instrument is drum, and then I moved on to bass, and then I um, when I was when I studied at music school, I had to um, take piano and music theory as a second instrument or I wasn't able to do the, the degree. So I, I obviously picked up piano and I started learning how to read and stuff. And then guitar just came through like my personal reasons, you know, I wanted to play at home, you know, um, a bit of church worship music as well. So I feel like that for me, that, that came in. Yeah. Awesome. Um, now, as far as your, your, your introduction into music period, Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, that's like, wow, that's a good, I love that question because it's like, it always gets me excited. I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, about structured music. But I think for me, it's, it just started in church, you know, it was like really simple. Um, I was brought up in church and, and, and obviously, I don't, well, not obviously, but some of you that don't know, but like, you know, that Pentecostal kind of Jamaican gospel kind of vibe and um music was a big part of that like music was a big part of my life like playing music hearing music watching other musicians play that was really key and important and um I had I've got a few older siblings and two of my older siblings they also played instruments as well so growing up around friends you know music was always played in my house we always used to have musical instruments so for me that uh, music was, I just kind of feel like I grew up in a very musical family, in a musical environment. Um, but personally, how I kind of, this was my first instrument. So one time I was at church and I just saw the drum kit and I ran over to it and I just started playing a beat and I was like, oh, oh my gosh. I think I was about seven or something. And I was like, Wow, I can play like what? So <laughs> then I had to get a bit scared because he was at me and I was very hard. But and so I'd get up until I was like, you know, I started to become more serious and then, you know, I wanted to be a drama and go music all that jazz. But yeah. Now, you know, for for, oh, for music. Yeah, we missed it. We, I think we just, yeah, great. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, um, now, you know, for, for young, you know, for the youngsters that want to get into music, kind of tiptoe their way in slowly, 
Um, do you provide like any kind of tutoring services, um, kind of teach them the basic fundamentals? Hmm. That's a good question. Like, I used to do a lot more teaching. Like teaching was like a massive part of my life. I used to, I used to spend a lot of time teaching in schools, teaching privately online. I don't do as much teaching as I was, was doing before. Um, I mean, yeah, I don't really do it as much, actually, to be honest. So I think more of my time is I'm doing other projects at the moment. So at the moment, I would say no. Me personally, no, I don't really do um, um, as much tuition. But, I mean, if someone really wanted to learn certain things, I could definitely help them with certain okay. things, definitely point them in the right direction and give them resources and tools and tips and stuff like that. Yeah, I could do that. Now, not to put you on the spot right away, but um, we put people on the spot a lot, by the way. On this. Okay. So um, how much would you charge hourly for like a virtual training session, let's say for, for, like, uh, for like guitar or, or, or drums? How much would you charge virtually? Um, what, for an hour or yep, half an hour? For the hour. Hour. Um, I think virtually you're looking at like thirty five pounds an hour. Pound. Uh -huh. I don't know what that would be in, you know, US dollars, but uh -huh. <laughs> I think that's probably roughly what twenty something, twenty five, twenty six, maybe in Let US see. dollars. Maybe I don't know. Five pounds in US dollars, so I can share the good people. That's forty seven, roughly forty eight dollars US dollars an hour. Okay, okay. That's fair enough. I mean, and, you know, based on your qualifications and you're a professional artist, so that's, you know, that's par for the course. Now, you described a little bit briefly about, you know, about life in the UK, but kind of break down a little bit more detail about being a person of color uh, in the UK. Mm. Such a juicy question. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Good. Um, okay. Being a person of colour, I mean, I don't know how long I've got. I mean, there's, uh, there's, there's so many ways I could go with this, but mm -hmm. I'm going to keep it and, you know, just kind of get to the point. So, I mean, it's quite interesting because I think being black British, so that's the kind of thing that we say, you know, in the UK, it's that black British vibe. There's this thing of like, I was, like I said, my parents were Jamaican, are Jamaican mother. So they were born in Jamaica, came over here and then they met and they had us, sibling, my, me and my siblings. So I was born here. So there's that thing of just like, when I go back to Jamaica, I'm kind of seen as foreign. And oh, then, uh, do you know what I mean? They're like foreign girl, they're like English girl. That's, that's what they say, you know, Jamaica. But so when I come, and then, and then in England, so I'm kind of like seen as British, but then I'm still kind of black, so I'm still Jamaican. So it's like almost that thing where you're kind of in the middle and you kind of don't have that thing. It's like, which, where do I kind of belong really? Do you know okay. what I mean? And so I think now, I think for me, I've just kind of um, owned the fact that I'm black British, you know, and I've owned the mixture of my Jamaican heritage and my British heritage as well. And I, I feel very, I feel like at peace with that. Like I sit in that quite well, knowing that I'm a black British person, um, woman, and, and I kind of just identify myself as that. Um, the dynamics of growing up in the UK, in London specifically, I think London is quite a, um we're like quite, a melting pot yeah I think London is very what's the word it's very we're quite spoiled in London and the reason why I say that is because of the rich diversity in I don't know if you've been to London before um but the, the rich diversity in London I mean you can meet anyone absolutely anyone from all over the world in London so for me growing up in London um in school you know growing up I was quite fortunate I had like all types of friends I had Asian Indian I had white friends I had um mixed race friends I had you know this just black friends as well I had so many different types of people around me in my neighborhood so I was quite fortunate to, to grow up in London and have that dynamic of you know being in a quite a multicultural school quite a multicultural area um so for me I found that quite enriching because I was able to um appreciate other cultures able to appreciate other religions um like like the muslim religion was very big in where i was brought up in london so stuff like that i was able to really um appreciate that and it's still quite big as well now i was able, able to appreciate that and have friends you know have good relationships people from different 
races and different cultures and and, and religions um so for me that's kind of been my journey growing up um but for me I would say some of the dynamics of growing up in London as a black woman and as a black girl um a lot of the things I challenges I found was within my culture and um that pertains to colorism and I think growing up I think colorism was a massive thing and it probably still is now in you know lots of young people in London um but for me being a dark-skinned woman was like whoa like you know Uh... yeah 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 so that was for me that's what I found um I didn't have much issues with white people or people that were not really my race actually to be fair Uh, yeah I had a lot of issues yeah (laughs) Yeah. some people can relate to this and I I don't know Uh speaking to someone right now but there's I had a lot of issues or had I felt a lot of uh, discrimination or you know vibes when it came to um people of my own um mm-hmm. within my own um, and race when it came to my how dark my skin was or how light or whatever so that for me I felt like that was my kind of thing and that's something I carry with me for a long time right. until up recently um obviously now being a dark skin woman is almost exotic it's very like Thanks. you know it's a yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> It is. It's a trend now, you know, but uh-huh. when I was in London, it, it was like, what? You're dark skin. It's like, and then also as well, it was like, Hannah, you're pretty, but for a dark skin girl. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 It was that kind of vibe. So I think for me, um, that's some of my story really in my culture, in the Jamaican culture, specific in the Caribbean culture, um, being dark skin was almost like, well, okay, you're not as lucky as my light skin friends or my mixed race friends or whatever um yeah I don't know if that even answers your question but it's a little it's, bit it's 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 crazy because I'm, I'm getting goosebumps right now because <laughs> that you know that experience is actually quite similar for for people of color in black communities here in the United States that's oh, okay. crazy okay yeah that's 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 crazy how it's, it's similar here you know me having two older sisters you know that are dark skinned and kind of the, the the negative experiences they had within their own black community it was yeah. crazy they didn't have that same experiences with the white american community so that's you know uh we don't have that term colorism here it's mm-hmm. more we just say light skin versus dark skin but you know so yeah. I, I see what colorism means um yeah yeah you know in the uk so i learned yeah. something new <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they do in the UK. We do, to be fair, we do say light skin, dark skin. We say brown, you know, all that stuff, black, you know, whatever. But um, yeah, same thing. Yeah. Now you have so you're an entrepreneur. You got food and music, mm. and um, uh, it's like what an online uh, food delivery service, Jamaican yeah. uh, food influence. Kind of share a little bit about that. Hmm. So that's really interesting. So that was birthed through the pandemic and the lockdown. So um, we used to, so my, me and my business partner, we used to do events um, before prior, you know, po- a pre-lockdown. And so we used to do events and we used to have like undiscovered artists on the stage. And then on the side, we used to have like vegan, like food, but flavored, you know, tasty. And um, we started to do those events really regularly. Like every month we were doing those. And it was really popular, obviously, the pandemic, the lockdown, everything just shut down, shut down, and it kind of just stopped our flow of what was what was we were building the momentum, and so we wanted to kind of we were thinking, okay, what can we do like right now? How can we kind of keep this vibe? How can we bring this experience to people? So we just we kind of thought of this thing where we're like, you know what? My mom has been making Jamaican food, you know, um, yes. making you know, food, yeah, for like you know over thirty years. So we thought of like bringing her recipes also the musical element is that every time someone buys a meal they get um, a playlist of undiscovered um, artists they get like a little QR code where they can yeah where they can access like a playlist of artists that they probably wouldn't hear normally you know they're not on the radio but yet they've got there's some amazing um, talent out there Mm -hmm. so we thought we put those two together so that's basically what it is it's basically um, a food and music delivery service and that's what you get and so it, that happened. We did that this year. We started that this year, actually. And it's been amazing. It's, it's been it's going like it's grown really organically and naturally. Um, we've you know, we've done a lot of things. We've tried to, we've done like birthdays, we've done anniversaries. We've also like done a bit of more retail side. But at the moment now we're pushing our 
kind of product more to the um, wholesale side. So we've got some food in um, other shops so people now can experience, you know, what we're doing in another place. Yeah. Oh, that's, you know, that's, that's awesome because, you know, in, in, in a way you're also, you know, celebrating your, your Jamaican roots, uh, sharing some of that Jamaican uh, flavor and, and influence, um, yeah. you know, with your fellow UK, UK neighbors. Now, for, you know, for our future entrepreneurs, our, our, our youngest out there, um, what are some of the benefits of um, small business or the benefits of being a business owner? Mm, great, yeah. There's a lot of benefits. I think for me, some of the benefits is the flexibility. Um, the, the fact that you have a platform to be able to exercise your creativity and the fact that the adventure of it. For me, I like the adventure of the fact that, you know, for example, we started this year, earlier this year, and to see where we've come to build, to be able to build something and to see the outcome and to see the results. For me, that's one of the things that gets me going, the adrenaline. I'm like, yes, come on. Um, and um, the fact that you kind of own your time and you can kind of own, you can make decisions about where you, um, where you want to go, you know, in terms of business-wise, financially, relationship-wise. Another really big benefit is collaboration, is working with people. That's one of the things I absolutely love. I've met so many amazing people from just being an entrepreneur, being a self-employed, being a businesswoman. The people that I've connected, I've been able to connect with, has just been a blessing to me. And I think for me, that has been something amazing that I wouldn't, I can't, you can't really like compare that, you know, you know, you can't really compare that connection that you have. Even me, like meeting you right now and having this interview is because of me choosing to run my own business. Do you understand? So it's like facts, all these different facts. things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of thing. Um, now you collaborate with, is it the, the Loop London? Is that like some kind of like cafe in, in, in the UK? Yeah. So at the moment, we've currently got our food um, selling in their store in their um in their shop and that that again that was free business we just we just walked into nice. the shop we were like me and my brother which is my business partner we walked into the shop and we were like oh i think our food will look good here and then we okay started, yeah 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 <laughs> and then we started talking to the owner and we was like okay what can we do and then that's it from there this is what i'm talking about this is what i love about running my own business that the fact that i can go somewhere and meet someone and make that connection and you never know you know where that's gonna go um yeah right you never know you know where that's gonna go um i know uh, i went to a pretty large high school um in the detroit michigan area and i remember there was this young lady she decided to start a business from her grandfather's lemon pie recipe and some of her friends were kind of like okay you know nobody's gonna buy you know nobody's gonna buy your, your family pie in stores, but she went to uh, the, this grocery uh, retail shop and she realized that there will be a market at this particular chain of stores. So she simply spoke to the store manager. The store manager was like, ah, lemon pies, you know, aren't really that common around here. We're more into apple pies, cherry pies, but bring, you know, bring us a, a sample. So she brought in a sample, Hannah, she brought in a sample of these lemon pies and it changed the game. Now this girl has all kind of chains of stores where she supplied wow. lemon pies. She's running out of supplies and, and now she got her own factory. So I definitely feel you 100%. That's it. That's exactly what I'm saying. That's the beauty of it. And I think that for me is so exciting to hear that. I love hearing that story. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. Now we like to put every guest on the spot with uh, some 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 deep critical thinking. So here it goes. Okay. If you were to come up with a life story movie about Hannah Ledwich, mm -hmm. what would be the title of the movie, and which actress would play you, and why? Hmm. Well, that's a great question, and I am like, ah, wait, okay. <laughs> so if I so say that question again. Say it again. I just want to just kind of digest so, that. Your life story movie title, mm -hmm. the actress that will play you, and why? Mm. Life story movie title. I think. Mm, I think for me, 
it would be um how i think it would be called how deep okay, and how deep. The levels of that is quite complex because it's more of like, okay, how deep? Because I'm a deep person, but also how deep? And because of the some of my life um, stories and the challenges and the events that I have have been quite deep, and they've all, they've kind of challenged the depth of who I am to where I am right now. So I think I would say that how deep the actress she has a name and I cannot remember her name right now, which is kind of annoying. <laughs> I actually saw her today um on a program and i can't remember her name so i know that's really frustrating but she's in my mind i'm trying to think what is she a british actress or american actress she's american and she did like a series where she was this she was the main actress on i think it was netflix series um i can't remember what it's called now ah no it was bet it was on bet she did a series on bet you know who i'm talking about but i can't um uh remember her name at all um beautiful beautiful lady um she did like a, a, a BET series and like as a black woman um yeah oh sorry I, can't I would have name. loved to, to tag her uh on this clip I would have, I would have tagged her too yeah, <laughs> on social media yeah, yeah yeah oh my gosh I can't remember now I'm trying to look on, on on my phone right now but I can't even I don't even know oh yeah Mary B Mary Dane who's the act what's her name again um Mary J she, Blige no, no, no. Being, you know that there's a there's a BT series that was called Being Mary Jane. Being Mary Jane. Let me see. Do you remember? Mm. Okay, let me see. Being Mary Jane. Um, Gabrielle Union. Yeah, yeah. You know what's crazy? Um, I've had three guests. Well, you're guest number four that yeah. chose Gabrielle Union. As oh. the actress that will play them in uh, in a movie, that's yeah, okay. unbelievable. So that's um, one one of the guests I had. She actually was a body double for Gabrielle okay. Union because she's a stunt actress, and she okay. worked with Gabrielle Union on the set. <laughs> wow, that's awesome! Awesome, great. Yeah, like Gabrielle Union, she's really beautiful and um, beautiful and, and talented. Yeah, and so talented and just like the way, because the reason why I picked her is because the way that she plays a woman that is just, has just the depth and the emotion and the story, I think for me. And then she's also got that humor, kind of that kind of like dry humor thing going on when she speaks mm -hmm, as well. Of course. So I, I think for me that was, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's awesome. Uh <laughs> I love that question, by the way. It's a great question. I'm I'm definitely gonna tag her now. Like this guest number four that said uh Gabrielle Union. That's what's up. Yeah, it's so cool. Now um, you know, I we encourage our, our young guests and our young um, you know, our young audience typically twice each month to focus on goal setting, looking mm -hmm. ahead. Um, and we like to also have our guests kind of um carry that out it, 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 it kind of showed them how it's done so with you what is hannah's five-year future outlook what's like a, a good goal for you in in let's say by 2026 where do you want to be at mm -hmm. that's a great question i'm just going to tell them the light because i can see the sun is setting and it's getting a bit darker so is that okay mm -hmm. yeah cool Great. Awesome. Great. Cool. I'm back. You're good to go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What's some of my life? Okay. So, um, five years time. 2026. So 2026. Yeah, that's so good. Okay. So, some of my life, I think for me, in terms of like business wise, I could say I would love to get to a point where. I'm having multiple streams of in, um, passive income and I'm able to really choose a bit more in, um, intricately the projects that I want to um, get a, be a part of. I want to really kind of build a few things. So I re, like, for example, I want to go back to young people and kind of help um, build projects when it comes to um, music tuition and other things, kind of helping them to get off, you know, the streets and stuff like that. So um, I, I think for me, like in terms of this, I would, 
want to be in a position where I could um, be able to have that finance to be able to build a few things and have a few projects and, um, you know, services available in, um, for food and music, I think for me, food and music, I would love to be able to have that across London. Okay, like a franchise um, type, of, type of setup or? Slightly, not exactly franchise, because I know franchise is quite different, but I think for me, I would say more of just like having the service available in like maybe a few core areas of London, mm-hmm. uh, maybe one east, south, west, north, you know, having that and has, having somewhere where people can come, like a, almost like a hub where okay. they can experience music and food, you know. Yeah. No, this is this is definitely um, you know like food and music. The whole concept behind that is is definitely is definitely major. Right? I mean, I'm just it just blows my mind. Like you could incorporate you know some underground artists, you know, they're getting quality food, quality music. I mean, you really can't beat that. <laughs> well, yeah, you really I mean, can't beat that. I mean, things that we connect is that one of the two biggest things that we can connect of, isn't it? Food mm-hmm. and music. So when yeah. you think about connection, it's those two things, you know. Mm-hmm. Without you don't have to speak the same language to connect with someone when it comes to food and music. Facts, because good music is good music, good food is good food. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everyone's gonna like it if it's good, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 last but but certainly not least, what advice would you give um any of our young ladies of color that want to uh, build their own brand and and, and kind of you know carve out their, their their own niche. That's a good question. That's a really great question. Um, I feel like advice. I would say, um, this might sound really like weird, but I'll say work on you a little bit. So work on your personal growth. The reason why I say that is because running your own business is not for the faint hearted if I'm going to be totally honest with you. And it's not for everyone. And so I feel like um, when you run your own business, there is a, there's going to be an area of personal growth, personal challenges that you will just automatically face because it's one of those things that you're doing that is actually not the easy road to take. It's not the easiest route. To, I mean, if I wanted to just make money, I could just do a lot of other things. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. So just like really kind of maybe doing a bit of more, bit, a bit of like just, I guess for me, I'd say commit to the to the road of personal growth. That would be one of the things. Just, you know, wh- whatever that looks like for you, I'd say com- commit to that. Um, and then also I'd say, like, have a plan. Have a bit of a, of a vision, a plan. And um, I've got this kind of, like, statement or this kind of quote that I kind of um, made up myself, and it's kind of, like, inspired by others. And it's basically have a plan, have a vision, but be flexible with the method and of how you get there. So hold on to the mission, hold on to the vision, the goal, whatever it is, but you, but be flexible how you get there because you need to know that in life, things don't always go the way that you plan. And, and, and that's not just for negative things, that's actually for a lot of positive things. A lot of the things that I've got over the years have been through things, connections that I didn't even anticipate, you know? So I would say, hold on to your dream, your goal, whatever it is that you wanna do, but also be flexible with the method of how you're going to get there. Um, also get around people that like are five years in the game of where you want to be. Get around someone. It could just be one person or it could be a group of people. Get around people that that are you can look up to almost and say, oh, do you know what? I want that or I want to be where that person is. Um, and then also have a few people that are on the same kind of level or not like same kind of place as you, people that you can bounce off of, people that can okay. challenge you people that you can grow with as well um and then in terms of like there's loads of other like layers of it in terms of business wise and but I think coming up with a plan um and it comes to business I think you have to have an idea first of all um have an amazing idea that you think is different or it could not be something that's different it could be something that someone someone's done already but you just put your own little spin on it right um but the thing is with an idea is that there's it's great to have an idea, but if no one knows about it, it is pointless. It's absolutely pointless. Right. It's just pointless. Like for me, I've learned that over the years. Like I can the the, um, the issue with humanity has never been about ideas. We've never been fresh out of ideas, right? It's always been about how 
people get to hear and see those ideas. You know, there's so many amazing people, um, talented people out there, but you see them singing to themselves in their bedroom because it's, it's not just about having a great idea. It's not just about being talented. It's about how you get yourself out there. And um, so, you know, have, have a goal, work on your craft, work on your gift, whatever it is that you do. Um, and for me, marketing is so important. I think that's one of the, like business-wise, it's one of the biggest things. Like, like I said, you can be talented, but if no one knows about you, then it's not going to be, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so getting yourself around the right people, it could be just be one person, but getting yourself around the right people that are able to hear your stuff, able to see you in whatever, whatever you want to do. Could be music, could be a business idea, you know? Um, and I think, do you know what? I would say treat people, that be kind, like, for me, I'm like, do you know how much stuff I've got of just, just connecting to people? Not because I'm trying to get my business out there. I'm trying to get my music out there. Just because I'm just kind. I try to be kind. And, you know, I have a go at just connecting with people regardless um, of wherever I am. And just being kind. And you never know who knows someone else. You never know who that person is. You know what I mean? So kindness goes a long way. Um, and just valuing people and wanting to connect with people just because of that um there's yeah I think that kind of answers the question but yeah, that's it the just helps with networking you know when a person is kind humble um yeah. approachable yeah yeah I mean personal for me personality I think in especially in the music industry and entertainment industry um your ta your personality goes a long way you can be really talented but be just a complete like you know twat or whatever yeah. and <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. It's true. And people don't they won't work with you. They will rather work with someone that's less talented, but is reliable and is just a cool person. So um, personality, who you are, just goes a long way. And just don't be afraid to be who you are as well. That's another thing I would say. Don't be afraid to be who you are because um, everyone's unique. Everyone brings something unique to the table. So embrace whatever you bring, like go with it, like bring that to the table as much as possible. Um, yeah. You know, this is, you know, this is just an all around great interview because we covered, you know, all kind of points from, you know, from from colorism to running, you know, food business, uh, music, um, mm -hmm. you know, we pretty much covered, uh, covered the whole gamut. Now for food and music, um, social media tag names, is that at food and music one on both Facebook and Instagram? Yep. Food and, food and Music one on Instagram and then on Facebook, I think it's Food and Music, like the word Food and Music, um, if you type that in. Um, and you can follow me, myself, just, you know, just Hannah, um, Hannah Ledwich on Instagram and on Facebook as well, to be fair. Um, yeah. Okay, well, Hannah, um... You know, definitely appreciate you taking time. Um, I'm looking forward to tagging you on this thorough episode. Uh, shout outs yeah. to all my people in London. Shout outs to my people back well, home in yeah. Ghana. <laughs> you yeah, know, we got to yeah, represent yeah. for the diaspora, you know, so. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, uh, you know, look forward to, you know, following you and, and, and continued success, continued blessing to you and yours. Salute. Thank you thank you thank you so much for having me and like like looking out and for me and just saying okay Hannah what you on the show like it's been such a blessing to be able to be in this position to inspire others to you know to be to do what I'm doing and greater so yeah that's amazing thank you thank you so much we shall meet again my friend hey all right then take care